All right, folks, here we are back at it again. In this video, we're going to wrap up the content on bearings and headings. That'll wrap up the content in this unit on trig applications. So we are moving forward. I'm going to tackle the last two questions on page 24 in your packet. So if you haven't opened up to page 24 already, go ahead, pause the video and get that out and open to page 24. I'm going to su suggest that a lot of the, your success with problems four and five are going to be in attention to detail in the picture. So when we get into this, you are going to want to draw your pictures very, 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 as much like mine as you can. Put them in the same place on the picture. Orient everything the same. Again, attention to detail in the picture for these last two examples is going to be super important. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and let's get this party started. Number four says a plane leaves an airport and travels for two hours along a 120 degree heading at a rate or a speed of 175 miles an hour. It then takes a turn onto a heading of 30 degrees and travels an additional two and a half hours at a rate of 200 miles an hour. This question wants us to determine how far it is from the airport and from its last position, what is going to be the heading back to the airport. All right, I'm going to start my picture down here and I'm going to call this point A for airport. And from the airport, we are going to fly away at a heading of 120 degrees. So remember, headings are measured from the north and this heading is going to be at an angle of 120 degrees. So I'm going to go a little bit beyond 90, but not as far as 180. And if I'm thinking about what the two little angles are that make up this angle right there, if I've gone 120 degrees, 120 degrees is 30 degrees past 90. I'm just going to make that little angle in there 30 degrees. And this guy in here is going to have to be 60 because together the two of them are going to have to form that right angle. All right, so there's what we've got going on in the very first leg of this journey. At this point now, we're going to take our plane and we're going to turn onto a heading of 30 degrees. So from the north, we are now going to take a turn that's going to be 30 degrees. So that little angle in there is going to be 30, which is again going to make that angle in there 60. And we're going to go for two and a half hours this time at a rate that's faster. So I'm going to draw that purple leg of the journey longer than the orange leg. And then at that point, we're going to stop and I'm going to label this P for plane. And I think we're to where we are at. We are trying to determine now how far our plane is from the airport. So I'm going to call that distance X and also the heading back to the airport. I'm going to ignore the heading back to the airport for the time being, and I'm really going to focus or narrow in on this distance it is from the airport. I need to find the distances in the first two legs of my journey. Some of you might be able to do some mental math and find this real short, sweet, and easy. But if you can't do that mental math, I'm going to remind you that distance is always rate times time. We talked about this last week, uh, back when I was in the classroom. And again, we find the distance by multiplying the rate times the time. We have a rate or a speed of 175 miles an hour, and we're traveling at that rate for two hours. So our distance is going to be the 175 miles an hour times the time, two hours. Or in other words, 350 miles. And again, you might have been able to do that mentally, and if you good, could, then good for you. But if you couldn't, you can rely on your trusty DERP formula. I'm going to do the same exact thing to find the distance traveled in the second leg of my journey. So again, in the second leg of my journey, we're traveling at a rate of 200 miles an hour for two and a half hours. 
and the distance traveled in that second leg of the journey then was 500 miles. I'm going to draw a few things in my picture that you may or may not want to draw in yours because I'm going to erase them after I draw them. But I'm just going to have a flashback back to your 10th grade geometry class and I'm going to remind you at that time about parallel lines and transversals. So the reason that this is important is because in your 10th grade geometry class you learned that alternate interior angles that are formed when a transversal crosses parallel lines are always going to be congruent. In this picture, the alternate interior angles, sometimes called the z-angles, are here and here. And since we know that the measure of one of those is 60, we know that the measure of the other also has to be 60 as well. So I'm going to go back and erase those alternate interior angles that I just drew. But again, those angles there and there both have to be the same. And since I know that one is 60, I know that the second has to be 60 also. All right, let me go back and clean up what I just put in there. I am, however, going to go label that second angle 60 degrees. This is important because I know that that angle now between the first and second leg of my journey has to be a right angle, a 90 degree angle. And this is helpful because now I can use my Pythagorean theorem to go ahead and to find x. So I'm going to do a little a squared plus b squared equals c squared, or in other words, x squared equals 350 squared plus 500 squared. So I'm going to grind this out on my calculator. You're going to want to do the same thing while you're watching the video. Just type everything in to make sure that if the calculator is going to get kicked back at us and get a little snarky, we find out about it ahead of time and we can fix it in advance. So x squared is 372,500. When I take the square root of both sides, I find that x, or the distance that my plane travels, is about 610.3277, and then a whole bunch of other decimals, miles. It doesn't tell me what to round to on a quiz or a test, it will. But I'm just going to go out and say this distance traveled by our plane, or the distance that we need to go back to the airport, is about 610 miles. So that's the first part of the question. The second part of the question wants us to figure out from the last position, what is the heading back to the airport? So I'm going to come up here to my plane, heading, remember is the number of degrees from the north, so I'm going to measure from here, and I want to go find that angle all the way back around to where I'm going to travel on that uh, path back to the airport. So if I think about this, this distance here is 180. This piece here is going to be alternate interior from that 30. So that little wedge in there is going to be 30. And then I'm going to call this angle in here, for lack of something better, theta. So my heading is going to be 180 plus the little 30 in here plus the theta. In order to find theta, because I'm looking at a right triangle, I can use Sokotoa. So I know that opposite or across from theta, I have a distance of 350. I know that adjacent to theta, I have a length of 500. And the trig function that deals with opposite and adjacent is tangent. So I know that the tangent of my angle theta is equal to the length of the opposite side, 350, over the length of the adjacent side, 500. And if I want to find an angle measure, I'm going to use inverse trig. So theta is inverse tangent of 350 over 500. That 2, I'm going to go ahead and plug into the calculator. You should too, to make sure you know how to plug all these in. 
when my calculator tells me that theta is about 34.9920 and then a whole bunch of other decimals. So again, my heading, if I think about this, is going to be the 180 plus the 30 plus the theta. So I'm going to get out my calculator, and in my calculator, I'm going to do 180 plus 30 plus the unrounded theta. Remember, you're going to use all decimal places in all of your calculations. So my calculator is telling me 244.9920, and then a whole bunch of decimals. And again, I think we're going to round to the nearest integer, which is going to make our heading 245 degrees. So that question relies more than a little bit on your ability to bring back your uh, some of your geometry skills from your geometry class a couple years ago. Your work with uh, parallel lines and obviously Pythagorean theorem also. All right, number five, I'm going to again suggest that you draw the picture the same way that I draw it. Don't try to draw it too small, make it nice and large because we're going to be utilizing the picture along with your knowledge of geometry from a couple years ago to solve this question in number five about the ship. So number five says a ship leaves port, travels due west for 30 miles, then changes course on a bearing of south 30 degrees west, and travels an additional 50 miles, find the bearing from the ship back to the port of departure. All right, so I'm going to start up here at the port and go due west. Sometimes I like to put a little compass on my paper, reminding myself that I'm going to have to go from this port and go due west. That distance is 30 miles. We're then going to change course to south 30 degrees west. From this point right here, I'm going to head 30 degrees west of south. So this little angle in here is going to be 30, which is going to make that little fella 60. And we're going an additional, what does it say, 50 miles. So I'm going to label that distance 50 miles. So this point S right here is where my ship ends up. I'm going to label that point P for the port. And this is important to notice, I'm going to find the bearing from the ship. So from the ship to the port. So this is my place right here where I want to find the bearing. In other words, I need to figure out that angle in there. Oh, nope, sorry, I have to go back draw my segment into the port. That's the angle that I need to find, that one that I highlighted in blue. Again, from my ship back to the port. All right, I'm going to again draw back on your knowledge or think back to geometry. We'll talk a little bit about some angles here. If these guys are my pair, let me do a different color here. I've got some parallel lines, boom and boom. I've got that 50 degree transversal. These little alternate interior angles are going to have to be congruent. So since one of those measures 30, the other one is going to have to be 30 as well. So I'm going to go back and label that in my picture these 30 degrees. I'm going to label this angle in the triangle theta. I know that the angle up at the top of my triangle, so this red one is going to have to be 120 degrees or the 30 plus the 90. So 
that guy is 90, the 30 and 90 together are 120. And if I knew that distance that the ship was going to have to travel back to the port, then I could use law of sines in order to find theta. So the first thing that I'm going to do is find x, the distance that the ship has to travel back to the port. And since I have the side angle side scenario, the way that I'm going to do that is to use a little bit of law of sines, uh, sorry, law of cosines. So I've got my side opposite that angle of 120 that I'm going to use, which is x equals 30 squared plus 50 squared minus 2 times 30 times 50. Remember, this is law of cosine, so I'm going to use the cosine of 120 degrees. If you want to, you can put this all in there in separate steps. I'm just going to type in 30 squared plus 50 squared minus 2 times 30 times 50 times cosine of 120. So 4900 for x squared, which means x squared is the square, or x is the square root of that, making my distance back to port 70. Now I can go ahead and match up my opposite pairs, and I can use law of sines to find theta. So 30 over the sine of its opposite angle, which is theta, equals 70 over the sine of its opposite angle, 120. So 70 times sine theta equals 30 times sine of 120, which means sine theta equals 30 times sine of 120 divided by 70. And to find theta, I'm going to write sine inverse of that fraction. Probably if I was here in class, I wouldn't write this all out. I would simply tell you I was going to use inverse. But because I'm not here, I'm going to write it out. I'm going to grab my calculator. I'm going to grind all these numbers through on my calculator. My calculator tells me that theta is not quite 22 degrees. So 21.7867 and a whole bunch of decimals. And again, if I'm thinking about my bearing, my bearing is going to be in the northerly direction. And that angle that I'm looking at there for my bearing is going to be the 30 degrees plus the theta. So 30 plus theta is going to be about 51.7867 and a whole bunch of degrees. Or I'm going to say 51.8 degrees. And again, on a quiz or a test, it'll tell you what to round to. And we are going 51.8 degrees east of north. So there's our bearing. Beautiful. Well, I did that in under 20 minutes. Go me. Yes. I'm going to tell you that your homework is to finish the questions on pages 26 and 27. I'm going to tell you, too, if you have questions, you have lots and lots and lots of options. You can ask Mr. Korea. You can utilize the help that's available in student assistance. Um, Mrs. Stradley and Mrs. Clausen are great resources, as are Mrs. Curtis and Mrs. Main, because all of us teach pre-calculus. You're always welcome to email me with questions, and I'll get back to you. But again, lots and lots of support. Uh, that's there for you, even though I am not able to be with you uh, at school in the time being. Don't be afraid to utilize uh, all of those supports that are there for you. 
All right, I hope to be back with you sooner rather than later. I really, really do miss you. I appreciate your time and attention and watching the video more than words can say. I hope to be back at it with you in person real soon. All right, miss you guys. Bye for now.